Welcome to your second video tutorial for writing the papers for the Survivor Stories project. We'll start at the My Big Campus bundle, so please make sure that you have that loaded and you can check out the resources that are available. If you scroll down, we are today on step four, writing the Survivor's Story. This paper is all about telling the story of your survivor, so it is the centerpiece writing for the project. You have already written the background, the focus on the tragedy, uh, illness, or other challenge that your survivor has survived. Now it's time to tell that person's story. This paper is actually a series of short papers, four of them in fact. Each one is directed by a question. You'll find those questions here. The questions are, what was the survivor's life before the challenge? What was the impact of the tragedy, illness, or challenge? How did the survivor fight back? And what was the survivor's life like after recovering? Answering each question can only be done through research. So you must cite at least three resources for this paper. One of these must be a primary source interview. So if you don't know quite what a primary source is, refer to primary sources above. There's a link here that'll help you understand. But simply look for an interview. That's one of the best ways to find a primary source for your subject. And most of you will be able to accomplish the primary source requirement through an inter interview. You can read the other questions and answers through here as well, including some guidance on what to do if your survivor is a family or friend. Today, during this video, I'd like to take a look at my model example and explain exactly how I accomplished what I accomplished with it. You'll find the model example down here, Model Survivor Story Writing. Here it is. My Survivor's Survival, sorry, My Survivor Story Model Example is based on the format that you will find Doctopus to your Google Drive folder. The document contains all of the questions, and you will write the answers below each question. Make sure your answers are not italicized. You will also create a Works Cited section, just as you did for the background page. Make sure that you're checking the grading rubric. We'll talk about that later. You can see that my model example presents answers that range from 50 to 250 words. My answer for the first question is short primarily because I could not find much research on this first question. The answer to the next question is longer, lasting two paragraphs. Then another two paragraph answer, and finally a four paragraph answer. The length of these answers depends on the amount of research I was able to conduct to answer the questions. So let's take a look at that research and how I conducted it. I'll go to my Digo list. Remember that we're using Digo lists to fuel our research. I find my list, Clarkson Survivor Project Research, and I narrow it to the survivor pages. So when I narrow it to the survivor pages, that means I'm only looking at sources that relate directly to my survivor. My survivor is my Mark Pucareal. He survived the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings. I read each one of these sources, and as before, I will take notes, but I've taken notes this time in a slightly different fashion from the background paper. Let me explain how. On the background paper, you had to determine your own outline. On the survivor story paper, the outline is given to you because you must answer each of four questions. So when I set up my notes page, I copied and pasted the questions. You'll see that each series of bulleted notes follows a question. So how did I conduct this? How did I organize? Pretty simply. First, I would read a source. Let's say this one. Mark Fucaril, last hospitalized Boston bombing victim, heads home today. The video might play here in just a moment. So let me pause that when it plays. There we go. So I read this article. 
And as I read the facts, I'll type the facts into my notes in bulleted lists. Now some of those facts may go for the first question, second question, third question, or fourth question, and I'll determine where they go. After I've typed them, I'll make a quick note. Take a look at this. The two bullets here, the first two, under what was the impact of the tragedy, illness, or challenge, come from this article. And what I did was made a comment, and the comment is the title of this article. So, these two come from that article, these three come from that article, these four come from this article, and this first one comes from this article. You can see that my initial bullets all come from the Mark Fukuriel Last Hospitalized Boston Bombing Victim Heads Home Today article. That's because I read that one first. Then I go to my next source. And perhaps I'm reading his Facebook page. I read through his Facebook page and once again I make comment or note notes into my survivor story notes document. And you can see where is it? Here I have some bullets which refer to the Facebook page. More bullets that refer to the Facebook page. So I'm taking a look at each source, reading the source noting the facts that I will want to include in my writing. As I read the sources and I note the facts, I make comments so that I can keep track of which source yielded which fact. This will be essential when I want to cite my research later on. Once I've done this, I've finished a series of bulleted lists of resources and facts for each question. Then I'm ready to write. These facts will yield the paragraph or series of paragraphs that I will write in response to the question. So let's take a look at this third question. How did the survivor fight back? Here's my list of notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine notes yield two paragraphs. Fuca Real spent the first 45 days of his recovery at Massachusetts General Hospital. He underwent a series of surgeries and physical therapy sessions before being moved to Spalding General Hospital. While at the hospital, he was unable to bathe, dress himself, or even transfer himself to a wheelchair. Through both hospital stays, he made 16 trips to the operating room and underwent 49 surgical procedures. Looks like I made one mistake. It's not Spalding General Hospital. It's Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital. Let me make that change. Good. But you can see that that paragraph just collected notes. Here I have several notes that transferred themselves into sentences. And I have information from some others. Oh, there it is. 45 days at Massachusetts General Hospital. So my first paragraph came from these two sources. So these facts have yielded sentences. Pretty easy to do. Don't forget about citing everything. We've discussed MLA citation, both in text and works cited pages in class. Make sure you are trying to cite all of your information, just as I have done in the model example. As you read through my model example, you will see nothing more than sentences capturing facts that I have drawn from research. But you'll also see, as you should see in a good research paper, that I'm not drawing all of my information from merely one source. Take a look at this paragraph. Many friends, family, and fellow survivors visited Fucuril during his hospitalization. His sister, Stephanie Barron, said during this time that Fucuril's recovery was a marathon, unfortunately, not a sprint. It's going to be a long road for him. This came from the Eben source. Then, Fucuriel left Spalding 100 days after the bombing. He was the last bombing victim to leave the hospital. That came from the Nagawi source. So one paragraph came from two sources. Just as above, this paragraph is a mix of facts from these two sources. This paragraph comes from the Nagawi and Barstool sports sources. If you are writing your research paper properly, you will write paragraphs that will mix a number of different sources all based on your notes. So let's review here for a moment. You should have a list 
of resources indexed according to survivor as we've worked through the Digo list before. You read each of those sources and take notes. Those notes should be organized according to each question, so you can easily transfer those notes into sentences and paragraphs later on. As you finish your notes for each source, make sure to comment so you know where everything came from. Once you have the notes ready, you're ready to write. Take the notes and transfer them into sentences in paragraphs. Organize paragraphs as you see fit. Do not forget that each answer to each question may be one paragraph, two paragraphs, three, four. It all det is determined by the types of facts that you are organizing. Make sensible paragraph decisions. Once you've done this also, double check to make sure that your word count is accurate. Selecting on an entire paragraph, typing Control shift c will show you the total number of words. 50 is your minimum. This looks to be my longest. 250 is your maximum. And that looks good. My Works Cited page is intact as well. Do not forget to refer to the MLA tutorials on Works Cited pages and in-text citations to help you understand how to write this. My last step, of course, is to take a look at the rubric, which will be linked at the bottom of your document. The Survivor Story rubric is very similar to the background paper rubric. However, the first four criteria are different. Each one is for a different question, and the criteria are the same for each question. Earning a 2 means that the writer fully answers this question with sufficient detail. No significant questions are left. The reader understands exactly what the answer to this question is. A 1 means some details are unclear, and a 0 means that the writer does not answer the question. Be sure to aim for a complete answer to each question in order to earn a 2 for each. The rest of the criteria are the same as the background paper and mostly deal with paragraph structure and research details. Double check your paper according to the rubric after you've finished it. Read your research, take your notes, write your paragraphs and sentences, double check against the rubric, and then you're good to go. Ask questions as you have them. Join discussion boards on my big campus if you have questions. In the meantime, happy writing.